All right, we are back live again. I don't know what happened to the connection, but we are back live with the same topic, and we want to know exactly what you guys think about today's topic. So feel free to put your uh, questions up there and let us know exactly what your thoughts are when it comes to today's topic. So, again, feel free to call in. We have the call-in number for you right there, so just call in, and we'll be here to answer any questions that you guys might have about today's topic, and we'll definitely go ahead and go from there. So... Feel free, guys, call in and let us know what your thoughts are about today's topic because, like I said, I know a lot of people had questions about today's topic, and we're excited to see and hopefully get some of your questions answered. If you write in and, or if you call in, whichever you decide to do, we're here for you. Whether you write in or whether you call in, uh, we're right here for you. So we'd love to hear exactly what you guys think about today's topic. So feel free. Give us a call or just uh, write, write your opinion. So, Dr. Farr, what, what do you think? Well, I think I hinted at I was saying earlier, hinted at before, which is better. I think in anything you do, exercise or diet, it's more what's important is really uh, following it and doing it, just picking something and just doing it. Um, everybody has their preference, and uh, I think everybody probably knows the answer, which is better. And I, I think one time I hinted, which is better than great for diet or anything like that. What I found in life is just being motivated and doing it. Mm -hmm. So... It's interesting, there have actually been studies that have been done where people compared um, the low-fat diet, low-carb diet. In fact, there was a study out of uh, Stanford a few years ago, okay. which actually put in together four diets, the Atkins, the Zone, the Ornish, and the Learn diet among women. And they found at the time there was no um, difference between the, between the four. Okay. And then they went back and said, well, maybe some diets work better because of a... Uh, genetic makeup of being what's called insulin resistant or not and they went back and redid it and and said low carb versus low fat and then somebody stopped and said okay but what does low fat mean <laughs> and low carb mean seriously i mean it's nice to say low fat low carb but from a scientific point of view how do you really measure it mm -hmm. and uh it was always known said if you were to do a low fat diet then that meant then Less than 20% of your food intake had to be fat. And uh, if it was low carb and it said less than 20% had to be uh, low fat. Mm -hmm. But as it turned out, it was that uh, the, what they, they standardized it. And now for to be a low carb diet, 30% has got to be uh, from carbs. And if it's low fat, about... Uh, of uh, 30% actually, they increased to 30%, that's a low carb diet. So they went with that and they defined it and they put all these people on this diet and they told them, you know, you gotta eat vegetables and you gotta eat all the right foods. Okay. And what they came up with was that by the time they get, they're done with it, there was no difference in the pounds per pounds weight loss or gain, there was no difference. Mm -hmm. um, and in reality, one of the things they found long-term, they, you know, they followed them for a year, then they followed them years down the line. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, no matter what diet it is, about, and you love this stat, mm -hmm. greater than 90% of the people who've been in these diets put on that weight again. Wow. So, so initially <laughs> studies said, oh, low fat was a little bit better mm -hmm. because you lost the weight. But long-term, there was no difference. So what the ones that do, I tell you what was interesting to me more about low fat and low carb what of the people that actually lost the weight and kept it off, it wasn't about the low-fat and low-diet. Okay. Is they were focused on eating more proper foods, like they were eating vegetables all day long okay. and salads. And originally when they came up with, if you remember the first Mediterranean diet, low-carb mm -hmm. uh, low diet, what they were finding is that you know, the people, the food they were replacing it with was like food that was uh, that contained, uh, uh, I'm sorry, low-fat, they were contained... Uh, processed, you know, enriched wheat and things like that, okay. and sugar. Wow. So they replaced us. <laughs> supposed to, you know, we, okay, you're going to go low-fat, low-carb, you replace with vegetables and healthy things, you know, eating the right amounts. Right. Uh, rather than saying, okay, I'm going to eat low-fat, but I'm going to eat this. So when they gave these people what was more impressive of these people who really lost the weight is that even though there was no calorie restrictions, the ones following the diet actually had about, they were eating about 500 calories less, part, mainly because they were eating the right foods. Okay. And uh, the other thing that was interesting is that by eating the right foods, they were not eating like in the car when you're driving oh, home I see what you're saying. or stopping for a fast food restaurant, eating at the office, <laughs> eating at the library. They had a plan to follow. 
And I, if you remember, I talked about calorie counting. Right, absolutely. And uh, the calorie counting, and uh, they counted the calories, and you know it, it didn't matter. So what turns out, they were eating the right food. It was low fat or low carb. It turns out, it really didn't matter. But for long term use, the ones that keep it off, they followed whatever diet, eating the proper food, they learn more about nutrition, and uh, and not eating you know the high sugars and high fats and the high carbs, and they were maintain it off. But the ones that people, once they stopped that diet, they did, they went back to what they were doing, and it came right back up again. <laughs> and the ones that combined it with um, exercise actually mm-hmm. uh, were able to keep their weight off more. So it was really about the exercise and not even really about no, it was the about, diet. No, it was, it was about the diet. It was interesting that there were some people, it would, that's the thing that flabbergasted me. Okay. There were people who were on low-fat and low-carb diet, okay. no-calorie limits, actually gained about 20 pounds. Wow. So go figure that one out. So basically it's about motivation. Main thing is always take in less calories than what you, than what you use up. Could you give us an example of that? Because, I mean, we do hear that, but we kind of – Okay, what do we mean by that? Like, like basically if you eat breakfast, if you eat lunch, and if you eat dinner, I mean, I don't know how many calories typically – Well, there's, this form is based on your weight, your height, okay. your fat content, on calories. So let's say the average person just make up the numbers about 2,500 calories a day. Okay. So in order to lose weight, you want to calculate so that you're eating about maybe 2,000 calories a day. And okay. there's scales. If you do 1,000 calories a day, you're going to weight, um, lose weight faster. And there's uh, today's modern age, a lot of apps that will help you do that. And, uh, and basically, if you take on 2,000 calories as opposed to 2,500, maybe, maybe you might lose a pound, or t- a pound a week or a pound every two weeks. Mm-hmm. But you've got to follow. It's kind of hard to do. And you need to follow that. Uh, and then if you, let's say, you have to use up 2,000 calories a day or 2,500, we said, but you eat 2,500, but you exercise and you ran for an hour or you did yoga or whatever, and that's 300, 400 calories extra you used up. Or if, uh, let's say, you're supposed to use up 2,500 calories to maintain your weight and you cut it down 2,000 calories and mm-hmm. then you go for a run for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you play soccer, did yoga, whatever, mm-hmm. and you used up... Uh, Five, you know, 500, 600 calories, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you're, in order to maintain your weight, you had to eat 3,000 calories, but you only ate 2,000, so you tend to uh, lose weight faster. So, so basically, you're, you're, you're really saying also, too, like exercise is a very important component. Yeah, because it adds, I think it's an incredible component because it allows you to um, increase your ca- calorie output, um, it, it, so you lose weight fast. It's almost like uh, eating eating less without eating less. Okay. You can still stay at 2,000 calories. Right. And, uh, but if you use 500, it's almost like you ate 500, you know, 1,500. Wow. Uh, plus, it, you know, for, we talked about the health issues and the, the health benefits of uh, exercising. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, 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 of course, I have to bring your stat up every time. I just love this. One of the things that kind of blew my mind. You mm-hmm. said if you walk 30 minutes a day, mm-hmm. <laughs> is it every single day? Every single day. Every single day. Or as you, much as you can, yep. You add 10 years to your life. Yep, that's so if you walk thing. 30 minutes a day, every single day, you add 10 years to your life. That's pretty, like, powerful. So when you first said that, when we first started doing this Facebook mm-hmm. Live, I was like, wow, that was, like, really impactful. Um, it's one of the most memorable things that I remember when it comes to actually, you know, things that we talk about here. So if you guys are uh, listening right now, please feel free to give us a call. We've got a phone line open if you want to ask questions about uh, any type of uh, health issues or, or things like that. Dr. Ferraro is here to talk to you, and we'd love to get your opinion on today's topic as well. So please feel free to call in. You heard uh, Dr. Ferraro mention uh, so far about the low-carb versus the uh, low-fat diet. So <laughs> please feel free to give us a call and or just write write some of your comments in there. We'd love to uh, reach out to you and see exactly what, um, we, what, what I, your I, opinion I, is. Yeah, I think the second take-home point besides um – the, you live 10 years longer if you walk 30 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, no matter what you set to do, whether it's exercise or taking your blood pressure, it's just setting a goal and sticking to it, getting up every day in the morning and mm-hmm. saying, okay, I'm going to stick to it rather than getting up this morning. Ooh, I see a donut. <laughs> and you have it. Sometimes you forget you're on that goal, but you've got to somehow remind yourself, okay, you need to set that goal and then maintain it. Um, and I, I think it can be done, but it's, it's hard. It is hard. It is, it absolutely. Is. And so this is what we're talking about here today. I mean, now you mentioned it's hard. Like what, so, so, again, some people do. Like I'm one of the ones who will see a donut and say, uh-oh, you know, yeah, and I'll I'm, mess I'm up the same that way. <laughs> but I, you just have to, you know, a lot of times there's willpower. 
Um, but it is hard. Or you, or you have no way to work or somebody brings in right. something. Oh, it's somebody's birthday party. Or right. Somebody calls you and say, let's go out. And that's, that's hard it's, because how, hard. Do you, how, do you, how, do you, well, how do you discipline your mind to say, no, I'm not going to? Because you know they say, hey, have a donut yeah. or have, have some cake. You know, it's, it's, so it's, a, it's a work office party. It, the, way, the way I do it, I literally count, go there and uh, count calories and then and sit there and say, okay, I have this donut. <laughs> that means I'm going to have less of it. Something else, and do have the donut. Okay. And uh, I think depending on the donut, I think Dunkin' Donuts are uh, I average anywhere from two fifty to about three eighty. Okay. So you know that's that's a lot of calories. It's not a lot in, in, in if they say a two thousand calories a day. So mm-hmm. you can have that donut. Uh, maybe. Um, also, you have to watch what donut. Like uh, there's uh, this place in Atlanta. I keep forgetting the place, but it's supposed to be nationally recognized by Georgia Tech. Okay. And uh, but their donuts literally are about a thousand calories. Okay. They're good. <laughs> right, right. They're the same size. <laughs> now Ann says, is beer good for you? <laughs> Laugh out loud. Um, I'm not saying if it's good or bad. I mean uh, it's it's a carbohydrate. I think if you drink too many beers, obviously it's bad. Um, from the point of, you know, being an alcohol uh, dependence. But I think it's a great thirst quencher. Um, I think many athletes like to drink beer after a game, but I think for me, it's it's a great thirst quencher. Um, in fact, many, uh, and I think they still do, um, marathon runners, the the premier marathon runners are part of their, you know, drinks that their coach hands them along the way. Uh, believe it or not, is beer uh, because of the carbs in it, and also uh, drink the night before. Okay. Our uh, carb loads. I've seen that where they uh, it's as part of their pouch. It, it, beer is in. No, seriously, <laughs> yeah, beer is I've in seen there. Them, yeah. Uh, it is, I think it's a great thirst quencher. Um, it is, um, anybody out there, does anybody know what uh, the word, uh, uh, what many countries call the word for beer is? Uh, that's a good question. I can Google it, but I'm actually live, so I can't Especially Google it. in the Czech Republic. <laughs> so, so, so if you guys, could you ask, ask that question one more time? Sure. What is uh, another word for beer in, in other languages? They, they call beer by specific food name. So tell, that will answer uh, Ann's question, too. <laughs> it is a carbohydrate, okay? So I'll give you the answer. So what is beer essentially made out of? I made beer, and I think a lot of people have at home one point. It's made out of, uh, is it uh, barley and wheat, or is it? It's flour, some okay. kind of flour. Okay. So it will be wheat, barley, or mm-hmm. hops. And what else? Uh, I'm not sure. Water. <laughs> okay, water, of course, water. Okay, water <laughs> and yeast. Okay. That, that, those are the ingredients. And then you can add flavors, you know, cherries or walnuts or uh, things. So what other food has the exact same ingredients? Flour, water, and yeast. What other ingredient? What other food? Good question, guys. He's asking come you on, that. You're, come on. You never, <laughs> I think most people at home should be able to answer that. What food exact, has the exact same formula? As, 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 the, uh, as beer. Okay, that's a good question. Um, I can't think of it right now. Uh, I unless it's, it's a bread. Bread. Okay, okay, bread. And I so, love bread. So beer is called liquid bread. <laughs> the exact same ingredients. You can go to any bake shop that makes bread. And said bread as well. So yeah. Ann and Leslie yep. both said bread. Yep, it's liquid <laughs> bread. Liquid bread. So that's what it's, it's known as, is liquid bread. So I don't know if that helps. So, so if you eat too much that, bread. That's carb. So if you eat too much bread, you can get drunk or... No, I'm just no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting. Well, in yeast, uh, there is uh, the the CO2 that's released mm-hmm. um, to make beer. It is actually, believe it or not, it is released in the yeast. That's why the yeast rises. Okay. The difference is that that bread is cooked, and then that does not convert to formaldehyde and sugars. And, and you have no living yeast in there to make alcohol mm-hmm. as a byproduct. Now, let me ask you too, Dr. Farr. What if a person is diabetic out there? What type of diet, uh, low carb or low fat diet, would be best for somebody who's diabetic? That they have to consult their um, their physician, physician okay. and nutritionist. Most diabetics work with a nutritionist. Anything. Okay. And uh, they do put them on diets because remember we talked about doctors clearly recognize that if you lose weight, Mm -hmm. um, you can reduce your diabetes and reduce your insulin content Mm -hmm. or even uh, your medicine uh, requirement. Okay. So early on, um, you know, if somebody finds out, oh, you're diabetic, you know, it's kind of big. That's a big, big diagnosis. Absolutely. And uh, you know, they sit them down and say, okay, let's do something about it, and they give them a diet to follow. Um, but I can tell you, um, one of the biggest sugar makers is carbs. Okay. So, um, th- by just stopping reducing, I've noticed a lot of, uh, 
diabetics uh, that have some patients, but just reducing the carbs, especially like, you know, from obviously you can see from the shirt, <laughs> Italian. A lot of can you, my can you see his shirt, guys? I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if they can know, see that a little bit better. Let, yeah, let's, you see that people, shirt? Italy's. A lot of people, have, you know, as you know, Italians eat a lot of pasta or risotto. And a lot of Italian diabetics, once they reduced that pasta and the risotto and went to basically just, you know, a piece of chicken at night or fish and salad, oh, boy, did it reduce their insulin requirement. Wow. And part of it is, you know, carbs, it drives your sugar up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so if you guys wanted to call in, we have a line right now for you guys to call in with any questions or if you, uh, some, some people made, uh, Ann made a comment there. If you guys have comments as well, please put your comments up there right now while we're live so that Dr. Ferraro can or answer. Or call in. Or call in. And, you know, we'd love to hear your voice. We'd love to hear exactly your voice. We've got a, a call in line re ready for your questions. What's, um, what I like about it, you know, is low carb, but if you get those Atkins or the South Beach, I noticed there was like the, you know, South Beach diet ready to you. It's almost like the commercial with one of those actors that tells you I lost weight and they send you food at home. Mm -hmm. Now I notice there's one with the South Beach Dyer where you pay this price and we'll send you the food and we'll put you on it. It doesn't matter. It probably is going to work too. It's if you get a book, the Atkins Dyer or the South Beach Dyer, mm -hmm. the Mediterranean Diet, it doesn't matter. I've said this before. It's just a matter of sticking to it and, uh, and sticking to it. Wow. You know, Lent is always a good time to do it because um, of the fact that, you know, you have to give up something mm -hmm. and uh, to give up on the diet. I mean, a lot of people give up alcohol or sugars or sweets. Mm -hmm. So you know, just make every day Lent. So if you guys have questions about a diet or some t something pertaining to today's topic, please feel free to call in. We'd love to hear your voice or put your comment down there like we've already had some comments earlier. So please feel free to do that. And today we're in our home studio. Literally. Yes, yes, yes. So we are here in a different location. <laughs> the weather did not cooperate. It's rainy here in Atlanta, and it's been raining all day. We were hoping to just go for a uh, take uh, uh, the the show uh, mobile where we're going to just going to walk around our yeah. neighborhood and, and show you the sights of Atlanta. <laughs> but the weather did not cooperate. Yeah, but we, we will next week. Yeah, next well, next time we'll do that for you guys. Just kind of give you a little walking tour as we're talking because we talk a lot about, of course, health. And we just said, you know, I talked to Dr. Ferrar. I said, Dr. Ferrar, why don't we just do a walking tour mm -hmm. as we're just talking because, you know, we can get some more steps in and, and it's and good. Also, for, well, also, we can show different walking paths. I just thought of it. You know, we can do the Beltline. Absolutely. Yeah, Piedmont Park. Those are great places to walk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you like to walk, I mean, just great places to people watch and just walk. And, and there's, uh, you know, different things along um, the way mm -hmm. you, know, you can stop and stop for coffee or a drink and absolutely we'll go for a run and, and so and, and you mentioned also too so so people who are looking to uh, go on a diet should they consult their physician um, before they start or um, what would you suggest I would say yes at least get your basic electrolytes liver function as make sure your body is uh, ready uh, to diet mm -hmm. um, make sure it's fine and then recheck every few months because one of the things that people are in diets they get uh, electrolytes um, a little bit out of whack meaning like sometimes you know if you didn't know your potassium was low and all of a sudden you're in a diet your potassium gets lower that can be dangerous or sodium or mm -hmm. some people dehydrate themselves so yes I would consult and a lot of physicians um, I think uh, and I think many physicians I've seen uh, they literally do have a, they get that questions often from their uh, patient and they do have a diet for them and then sometimes it probably helps to do it under somebody's supervision for example seems like people always do better in a workout if they hired a trainer okay or they do in a uh, boot camp as opposed to do it on your own you sort of have a motivation you have you know you have somebody you, that you have to count to mm -hmm. I think if you really need the extra motivation to do it under some kind of supervision I think it always helps Ann had a question Ann said is flu season almost over and how many years is a single shot good for I think shingles. I think she means a shingles vaccine. How many years is a shingle? Okay, how many, shingle vaccine? How many years is a shingle? I think it's a one time, so it's, okay. it's a lifetime. Um, second, uh, is flu season almost over? I think yes. Okay. Is, is, did it go a little bit further this year than normal? No, okay. I, th I think it just got more publicity further than normal. Okay. <laughs> so this is what we want. We want you guys to ask any uh, medical questions that you guys have. Again, these are just uh, tips. And like Dr. Farrar said, you need to consult your physician if you really have any uh, serious questions that pertain to your health. Uh, definitely, you want to uh, consult your yeah. physician right now. And I think uh, Anne is in the frozen tundra of Canada, 
So I'm sure. Yes, he is in Canada. Absolutely. The frozen tundra, I think. <laughs> so absolutely, guys. We are here again. You can call the number that you see right there on the screen, and we'll take any uh, calls and questions that you guys have as well. And we'll go ahead and go from there. And so, any other thoughts about uh, a diet as far as things that people should do um, before they decide to go on, whether it's a low carb diet or whether it's you know the low fat diet? I mean, what what would you? Any other? You, you, you can I think, think just deciding what you're going to do is we learn from this is that there's really all studies have shown I think it's preference people some people say oh low fat is better low carb but when it actually has been studied and what are you trying to accomplish by it mm -hmm. is um, losing weight there's no difference I, I think from a health issue none of them there, there's no differences between the two I think the worst I can go on just starvation okay <laughs> uh, or they used to I don't know if you remember in the in the 80s, there was diets they called liquid diets, where you drink these, you just drink these drinks, and mostly they keep you hydrated, a little bit of nutrients, but you go hungry, but you lose rapid within literally 30 pounds in a month. That was the fad, but there were a lot of people getting ill, you know. Wow, absolutely. So those out are no longer in favor, I you know. So so if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to put your questions up there. And we'll definitely go ahead and go from there. I ping one of those questions so we can unping it. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you. Oh, Ann says, if you walk an hour a day, can you be lazy all night? Well, I hope all night you can sleep. <laughs> um, but I think an hour, I think the more you walk, the more you do things, the better it is. When you burn off calories, it's healthier, it's fun. I mean, um, one of the things sometimes people, are, you know, they have these, they wear these earphones, they listen to podcasts, listen to the news. Mm -hmm. I tend to listen to the to the radio mm -hmm. or music. Um, what's, there's your favorite, more to what's, what's your favorite type of music you like to listen to? Oh, uh, rock. Okay. <laughs> basically, all the, you know, there's uh, all, all, I like all kinds of music, but basically just rock. Okay, okay. And also, too, um, is, is jogging better than walking or is walking better than jogging? What would you say? Uh, there is some studies on that. Some people say as far as getting in shape, you know, I, I think it depends on your joints and things. I think jogging is better. You, you, you increase your heart rate okay. a little bit more. You, you increase more calories. It's also you strengthen your muscles. It all depends on your joints. And I think, um, I mean, so what about just a combination of two, of, of, of walking and jogging? Because I think sometimes people think, I don't want to just jog all the time. I mean, walking and jogging, I think. I think it's fine, too. Okay. And for athletes, there's, again, I haven't seen the data on it, but there's a lot of talk now. If you're trying to get in shape, you know, you go there and you just do sprint sprints. You go up a hill and you keep going, go, 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 run, mm -hmm. run, 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 just to get in shape. And now they're suggesting, well, you know, you're just doing spurts. Okay. Maybe jog for about 20 minutes and then sprint. And it's all in spurts. Now, um, the word is style. All depends really on your joints. Because you, um, for example, people train for a marathon. It's it's fun. It's all that. But mm -hmm. the wear and tear in your knees and ankles, it is a lot to get ready for a marathon. Absolutely. You have to run 26 miles. It all really depends physically on your on your body. I think you always start out slow with the walk and build yourself up. And there's nothing wrong if you know you you're at Piedmont Park or Beltline. Everybody just jogging and going by you, and you're like walking. Then you jog a little bit. You know, do, do what you feel right. Anne says, uh, as I age, it's harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. Any ideas on how to solve this problem? Yes. I would, if you can go back and watch last week's show or two weeks ago, where we actually, we talked about uh, sleeping. I think my theory, I think as you're older, I think more for females, I think it's hormonal. I really do. Uh, and I don't think nobody's taking a close look at it, that females, nobody's adjusting for the, the hormones that allows them to not sleep at night. I think there's a lot of ideas. Uh, one is uh, you can get from previous shows, and maybe we can post it on here in Atlanta. There's, I think meditation is one of the, the best things. Like uh, the overall takeaway point: uh, sleeping pills that that are prescribed are not the right answer. There's things you can do that are you know just natural remedies like chamomile or melatonin. There's different products out there that are natural are much better. Um, but also uh, checking with a, what's called an integrative medicine doctor where they check your hormone level and things and make sure they're all in balance mm -hmm. so you could uh, sleep. So that does have a, a, an impact, especially you said on women, you think? I think because more women have trouble sleeping than men. Okay. Wow. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to call in right now or to uh, post your questions up there like we've had several questions in here already. And this is a great time to do it. 
because right now this advice is free, right? Yep. And, uh, <laughs> you know, also about diets, you know, the, the studies have made the biggest point, low carb or low fat, the biggest thing is it caused you to look at the right foods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but also you got to think about not going through wrong foods. Anything with processed sugar, if you really want to lose weight, I knew this one doctor lost about 60 pounds and maintained it. Wow. And, uh, and all she did, looked at every food that she did and said, okay, any processed food, mm -hmm. anything that had a high sugar contact, just, but just doing that, just eliminated, ate everything, mm -hmm. but just eliminated anything that had high sugar mm -hmm. or was processed food, basically processed sugar. Uh, so if, you know, yogurt said 40 grams of sugar, mm -hmm. that's out, but you can find some yogurt that's five grams. Okay. So she went to the five grams and she maintained it. Actually, I noticed that years later, she still has maintained that weight. Wow. And, and, and she didn't do anything, nothing different. That, that's, that's awesome. Just other than eliminating that from her diet. And what about, too, when it comes to uh, sleeping? Exercise, to me, my personal opinion, um, is, is great to help you relax your body so that you can mm -hmm. have a, a good night's sleep. For me, I mean, whenever I For exercise, me, mm -hmm. I can sleep so much better than when I don't exercise. I totally agree with that. Exercise does help with sleep and energy. Uh, it, it definitely does that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ann said, thank you, doctor. Oh, you're welcome, Ann. Yeah, yeah, so... Okay, one of the things that helped me sleep last night, I don't know why it was late. I noticed it was a class, a yoga class, but candle, believe it or not, candlelight okay. yoga class, hot yoga. And I do it at this place where it's not just hot yoga, but super hot yoga. It's about 120 degrees uh, to 130. Wow. It's like a steam room when you go in there <laughs> okay. for an hour. And I really enjoyed it. And of course, then you had added candles, increased the heat. And uh, even as I walked into the room, I was sweating without even starting anything. Wow. But it was great. It was so relaxing. They didn't, just by candlelight, and they dimmed the lights, and it was so peaceful. And of course, they played you know, that nice, peaceful music. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then I went home, and I fell asleep in the shower. It was, it was great. Wow. And it was a good exercise for me. So if you guys have any questions, again, we're, we're soon to wrap this show up, and we'd love to get your questions up here answered within the next you know, couple minutes or so so we can go ahead and wrap the show up. But please feel free to call in or to write your questions right there, right here on Facebook Live, and we'll be here to answer any questions right now. And, and if you are watching this video later on, Dr. Ferrara always gets back with people. Uh, when they do have questions, he That's loves to he, he loves to do that. So please feel free. And also please feel free to share this as well because a lot of people uh, love to share. They, they enjoy sharing your uh, yeah. Facebook Lives because you give a lot of great information. And, you know, a lot of times I go back and I watch your – your Facebook mm -hmm. Live because it helps me to if I have a question about something instead of calling you or yeah now just, you can always call me anybody you, so, <laughs> you know you can find us um, you know by my urgent care is urgent care at peacetree dot com or urgent care at Hills dot com but also here if you one of the shows you put in a question you're usually able to see it and be able to answer or just go to our Facebook page that you see here um, and you can ask a question I'm more than happy to answer. Absolutely. So, all right, guys. Well, we thank you so much for watching today. I hope that we were able to answer some questions. Again, if you have questions, feel free to just go ahead and add them uh, to this here, and Dr. Farrar will get back with you, and we'll definitely go ahead and go from there. But we really enjoy uh, when you guys actually uh, tune in and, and, and watch us because, you know, at the end of the day, this is all here. For here. We're here to help you, and that's why Dr. Farrar loves to do these because he enjoys um, talking to people. He enjoys and Dexter enjoys this, too. Absolutely, and I enjoy it, too. It's fun. It's fun. So... <laughs> So, again, we, we do thank you guys so much for tuning in, and hopefully you guys can tune in the next time uh, as well, and we'll definitely go ahead and go from there. So, Dr. Farrar, you have any parting words or anything like that? Yep. Yeah, guys, have a great week and a great weekend. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you back again next week, right? Next week. All right, guys, thank you so much, and, again, have a good, great night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ann.